Hey, g'day, how are we? Um, so I've been getting a lot of questions on how to use the volumetric lights in my Lightroom and in this video I'm going to show you how to make them. Let's get into it. Right, so this is my scene that I used in my Lightroom reveal, release, whatever you want to call it. Uh, this is with the volumetric lights enabled and a lot of you are saying that it doesn't work. Well, I'm going to show you how it works. So. Let me just delete all of the lights and we'll be in a plain scene like this. And now what you want to do is uh, import my lighting, my lighting and my settings. So just double click over here. I'll just create a new one for me. Let's select that. All you got to do is enable it by clicking that little black box, turning into a white box. Right. Now, when you go back into your scene, let's uh, just hop out of my camera. Set it back to where it was. Now hop out of the camera view. And you are going to be greeted with all this blue crap and white because the clouds. Um, let's just disable that so it's easier to see. Oh, 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 I think this guy maybe. Yep. Ah, kind of. Uh, anyway. Uh, no. Anyway, um, so yeah, you'll be greeted with all this crap. Uh, really, the only main thing is the volumetric lights and the light. These are the two important things that everything else in the null object uh, doesn't need to be messed with unless you know you have your settings you need to use. So uh, for this setting all I'm going to do is grab the light which should uh, start up here because I was sick of it spawning inside of the map. So I made it spawn up here. Um, I guess you could just save it wherever you want it to spawn. Um, yeah what you got to do is uh, move it to where you want it to be. Mine's going to be just in, just above the camera, uh, and rotate it so it's the sun direction is going uh, that way, and the shadows will be going that way. If that makes any sense, just because it makes sense to have volumetric lights on behind, and if the sun's behind, it'll just look better. I don't know. Um, yep. So. Make sure the sun direction is in the right spot. Now that's all you have to do with the sun. Um, the next thing you want to do is check that light object, uh, the volumetric lights. And I guess a lot of you thought that's hey, all you have to do to enable the lights. No. See, when you render it, it looks like poo. <laughs> uh, pretty much, there's nothing good about it other than the clouds. Um, yeah, that's not what you do to enable it. Uh, let's just to make sure it's on. And to enable it, you have to go into some tabs. For example, you have to click on Project tab for volumetric light, and then drop in whatever you want the light to affect in there. So I'm going to affect the text. So I'll find where my text is in, on the objects, and click on volumetric light, Project tab, and drop the null in there. And boom, look at that. It's bright white and very light. So you know, I'll hop out of my camera view and adjust it to that specific uh, object. Because if you obviously, well, it might not be obvious, but the closer you have the light to your object, the brighter it's going to be. So if I render that quickly, if you render a cheeky bit of that, look at it. It's very bright and not looking very nice. So. What I'm going to do is, uh, it doesn't look too bad, oh, it looks pretty ugly. That's how bright it is, it even has like a defined area. Anyway, um, so what I'm going to do is hop out of my camera view and click on my volumetric light and move it back. That's pretty much it, just all you got to do is a lot of uh, playing around, just want to test out where it's going to be. My phone won't stop going off. Okay, so. Um, for the text, it looks like that'll be quite good. Let's uh, drop it down, raise up a little. Just because the sun's up here, or the main direct light is up there, so you want it to kind of push the shadows out. That doesn't look too bad. Let's see what it looks like in the render. Okay. Hopefully, it looks good. Oh, actually, I shouldn't render that. All I'm going to do is render the text at the same time. Make it look quicker, make it go quicker. Okay. See, it already looks nicer than the light, bright, and very light, whatever I said. How good does that look? 
fantastic if you ask me. Uh, <laughs> I'm too enthusiastic. Okay, so there, that's it. That's all done. Um, I'll quickly show you how to do trees. Uh, by the way, I wouldn't recommend do, using these lights for animations, especially on trees, unless uh, that's if you're going to be moving them around. So, for example, let me just copy this. Oh, um, key. Okay, so copy that, delete the project, and then move it. So I want it to affect the tree. What I'm going to do is drag the light down to where I want it to affect. Okay, now open, find out where you left, where you saved your tree. Yeah, do that save this tree. Uh, tree one, no, tree two, no, just tree. Okay, so go to volumetric light project and drop in the tree. And there, it's all brightened up. But oh, that's the other thing. That's if you're going to use this for animations, you want to try and somehow hide it because when you're going to be moving your camera, if I were to render this out, there's just going to be a very bright patch there, and it's just going to be, look very obnoxious. And there's just no point of it being there if the sun's like, however far away it is, it doesn't make sense. So what you're going to, I don't recommend using this for um, animations. Uh, on trees. I only use mine on the text and the characters just because um, it's a easy to manipulate the uh, focal point from there, those distances. What you gotta do is uh, for my trees I like to put, use the logs as the main source and just stick it behind um, like that. Try and get that bright edge. I want to give it that glow. And then all you got to do, let's have a cheeky look. What does that look like? It's a little bright. Let's have in the render. See, it would probably look better in the render than it would. Um, of course, yeah, see, it's too bright there. So uh, that's when you go into the general tab and drop the opacity. Now let's give it a look. Uh, it looks better. Okay, so what I would do for the trees is I'd raise it up a bit. And copy and paste and just drag them down the tree. Like so. Obviously, my tree is bent, so it's going to be a little displaced. Now, if we render. Oh, actually, no, be, no let's not do that. Just to save time. Um, let's have a look. And also, the I think it emits the color from the tree onto the text as an object. It's also affecting it. And see, it adds a glow behind it. That is all for this video. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you now understand how to use it. My name is Corey, and I'm out. Goodbye.